I was recently watching a video made by a channel named Sin Topic on. I hope I haven't butchered the pronunciation completely and he spoke about a term that many artists experience in Hollywood termed movie jail. This is essentially when directors execute the cardinal sin in the movie industry. Lose money. In the video he specifically talks about how if directors are handed over a large budget in good faith looking at their track record and they end up making a financial disaster they experience either being completely rejected by the movie industry or have to then work their way back in order to regain the faith of not only the producers but the audience as well he references directors like Damien Chazelle who gained acclaim and fame through movies like Whiplash and La La Land but found himself in movie jail with the colossal failure that was Babylon we can of course argue about the quality of Babylon because i personally love that film and i think it got review bombed and was lost somewhere in its marketing but the circumstances that Chazelle finds himself in are undeniable a success story out of the movie jail that the channel references also is M Night Shyamalan a director unanimously loved for his critical and commercial successes like the sixth sense unbreakable and signs and who found himself in movie jail with disasters like the last airbender and after earth what's insane is the journey of resurgence and a journey mind you of high risk where the director self funded movie projects like the visit made on a small budget of 5 million dollars that ended up doing a box office revenue of close to 100 million dollars a similar success story followed with the movie split made on a budget of 9 million dollars a film that ended up doing 270 million dollars in revenue so in reference to these same examples i wanted to talk about the experience that artists feel working in the indian film industry how they too find themselves in movie jail after financial disasters some of who find a way back and others who always find it tough to reach that same level of euphoria and success as the indian film industry is also star driven and star obsessed i think the movie jail phenomena also holds true for actors so let's get to the video where we talk about 10 indian movies that ruined careers overnight Zero. The 2010s was an odd time to be a Shah Rukh Khan fan, and I say this because I always found it as if I was fighting a losing battle with his creative choices. With movies like Chennai Express, Happy New Year, and Dilwale, despite their commercial or average success, I found the movies to be extremely forgettable and vapid. The experiment that would follow with fan was met with polarizing responses, but ultimately financial failure. Rais, an attempt to be a gritty action thriller, did average business, and fan service in the form of jab hari mat sejal turned out to be a colossal miss there was a lack of trust that seeped in with the audience regarding a shahrukh khan film it never guaranteed a knockout or a home run a cameo appearance in dear zindagi is loved but fans expected something to match the star aura of the legend and in came the hugely expensive zero and it turned out to be one of the biggest disasters in his career a vertically challenged man prancing around the streets of new york in his chaddis while joining asa was completely rejected by the audience and this in some way became the last nail in the coffin could shahrukh khan regain the trust of the audience ever again as people wrote obituaries of his career 4 years later with the spy universe action spectacle shahrukh khan marked his return like never before breaking records financially that most people did not anticipate and one realized that they dearly missed him on the big screen accounting for one of the main reasons why the film was celebrated so much he was officially out of movie jail rgv ki aag if there is one person who is credited to have changed the dynamics of the hindi film industry considerably in the 90s it is ram gopal verma many people account rangila to have changed the landscape of how storytelling is done in commercial cinema there was no looking back for the director who was absolutely smashing it out of the park with movies like satya kon company and even horror films like bhoot while momentary misses like nach would exist rgv would always prove himself save with eventual like sarkar you never felt like his mojo was totally gone 
until 2007 appeared and we saw the absolute mess that was RGV Ki Aag, a terrible attempt at remaking a classic like Shole, and it went on to become a financial disaster. There was a complete lack of faith that had set in regarding RGV and his films, and even though momentary average successes followed in the form of Sarkar Raj and Rakht Charitra, nothing ever brought him back to the same revered nature he experienced in the late 90s and the early 2000s. It seems, however, that RGV RGV is in the deep end regarding movie jail, having dug himself in B-grade and sleazy films so much now that it really seems to be a point of no return. Skanda When one considers actors in the Telugu film industry beyond the stars who are going pan-India, the case of Ram Potineni is an interesting one because you can see the potential of the actor to move above the mediocrity he subjects himself to. He is an actor who does possess a charm in playful romantic sequences, even though they are laced with sexism, that's a separate point. He has an energy that is undeniable on screen. With successful films like Ready, Kandi Riga and Nenu Selja, you would wonder that Ram would really hone in on this image of the charismatic boy next door. But what comes with the success of a film like A Smart Shankar, one of the worst films I have seen by the way, is that you start believing that this is the memo to follow. And what has transpired since then is one loud, aggressive, matlab kuch bhi special movie after the other. While Red and Warrior were forgettable in many ways, I think nothing was worse than the abomination that was Skanda, making people really give up on the creative choices Ram is making. And now with double A Smart Shankar just around the corner, it has audiences prepared for more loud cringe than actually being excited for a commercial movie. Ishk in Paris For those who have been watching the channel for a long time, you would know that I'm an absolute fan of Preeti Zinta. I mean, it is absolutely insane on what an impact she had on me with her successful stint at the movies in the early 2000s. Your boy was absolutely smitten. And what was sad was that the same girl associated with commercial hits like Kal Ho Na Ho, Veer Zara and Salam Namaste just seemed to be not in the reckoning for big commercial movies anymore. With her involvement in the IPL, we just saw less of the actor, essentially when she was at her prime. And I think the absolute disassociation took place with her attempt at film production with a movie like Ishk in Paris, which turned out to be a production mess and a colossal financial failure, really making actively working actors not approach her for roles anymore. Her appearance in a movie called Bhaiya Ji Super Hit years later absolutely broke my heart because it was nothing short of a cringe fest. And as she marks her return with a movie called Lahore 1947, which is bound to release next year, I wonder how that pans out. Ganpat Imagine a movie being so bad that even after nine months of its release, it has not appeared on any streaming platform. I think the Indian audience has been very forgiving to an actor like Tiger Shroff, a person who came with great physical promise, especially in his debut. Tiger and Vidyut were considered to be talents who could finally give us adrenaline-pumping action set pieces where you can clearly tell that the actor themselves are carrying out the stunts. However, at one point of time, Tiger just ended up doing more of the same. For a person who was still associated with financially successful projects with the Bagi franchise and was catapulted with a film like War, you would assume that this would be the sign for the actor to pivot in some way or the other. But with disasters like Hero Panti 2, Ganpat and Bade Mia Chote Mia, I really think there is a huge disconnect taking place between producers investing so much money on a Tiger Shroff project and the lack of results they are seeing with the box office reception, leading to Tiger not really having a solo lead movie ahead. All a result of the repetitive nature of his appearances that audiences simply got tired of. Radhe Prabhu Deva and his transition towards direction in the Hindi film industry started with a bang, having been a key contributor towards the revival of Salman Khan's career with Wanted, the remake of the Telugu film Pokiri. You really thought that Prabhu Deva has the key to mass cinema that was missing in Hindi cinema, having proved himself with an entertaining film like Rowdy Rathor, proving himself later on also with R. Rajkumar. You wondered that Prabhu Deva is not going anywhere. But the steep downfall of the quality of films that came later was alarming, having directed disasters like Action Jackson, Sing is Bling and The Bang 3. One wondered that the talented choreographer is walking on thin ice regarding his directorial career. And I think with Radhe, shutting shop was the fate of Prabhu Deva's career as a director in Hindi cinema. No one can recover from the mess that was that film. And currently, as we know it, Prabhu Deva does not have a directorial project in sight.
Liger. The rise of Vijay Devarakonda in the Telugu film industry is inspiring. In a mostly guarded film industry where certain families call the shots, Vijay with his indie and left of field projects really was causing small ripples in the industry. But Arjun Reddy undoubtedly catapulted him to the stratosphere. What's insane is that even with a film like Dear Comrade, which did not turn out to be a financial success, the demand for the actor by production companies was through the roof. He was appearing everywhere in award shows, interviews, he had sold the rights for Dear Comrade to Dharma Productions and it was genuinely announced to the world that Vijay will be the next pan-Indian superstar. And with Liger, absolutely everything came crashing down. The hype for the film to be this career-changing movie was nothing but a smoke screen, and we were subject to a stuttering male lead trying to deal with an annoying Ananya Pandey and a random Mike Tyson who seemed to have no idea that he was in the film. This really did bring Vijay to movie jail. Now, having resorted to doing small Telugu projects, but the attempts have been lackluster at best with Khushi and the awful family star. I really wonder whether Vijay can win the trust back of the audience because it does not look promising. Samrat Prithviraj The era before the pandemic was such that the only dead cert one could think of when talking about the Hindi film industry and box office success was Akshay Kumar. The man could literally do nothing wrong, having an absolute dream run since 2016. Movies like Airlift, Rustam, Jolly LLB2, Toilet, Padman, Kesari, all were massive commercial successes. A dream run in 2019 where all his movies were commercial hits was unheard of. But something changed post the pandemic. The chatter around the saturation of Akshay Kumar performances almost became set in stone. The exhaustion that creeped in with his digital appearances and theatrical ones just a few moments later reflected in the box office performance of the films. But I think Samrat Prithviraj really dented Akshay Kumar's reputation as he still could not understand why there was a critique on the lack of time spent on a role for such a revered figure. It almost was tough to communicate with Akshay, who became defensive about his stance of working all the time, not realizing that the criticism was about the quality of the output and not how much we see him in movies. This has led to an absolute disconnect with Akshay Kumar's movies, not motivating audiences at all to come for his theatrical appearances. I wonder whether this tide will ever change. Bombay Velvet The journey of Anurag Kashyap as a director has been a tumultuous one to say the least. A director who had his first two films banned, who made a movie purely out of spite against the censor board, but more importantly, who always had something unique to say through his films. While he tasted commercial success for the first time with Dave D, it was his gangster saga with Gangs of Vasipur that really changed the tide for the man. Putting faith in a production company like Fox to invest huge money on a project like Bombay Velvet, and despite the film's quality, which can be debated, it turned out to become one of the biggest film disasters in history, absolutely setting a sense of distrust with the director and production companies. The director did find himself in movie jail as he had to resort to small budget films, which seemed to be Kashyap's home turf essentially, something for which he did not have big production honchos dictating his creative calls. However, Kashyap hasn't had a box office hit since Gangs of Vasipur, and this really seems to be a point where one wonders if he can ever reach the same heights of 2012 ever again. Thugs of Hindustan The case of Vijay Krishna Acharya is something that I find so fascinating because he is essentially the product of being associated with a film production company for so long that they just entrust him with massive projects. Having worked with YRF since the early 2000s, he worked as a story and screenplay writer for the early Dhooms. His first directorial venture, Tushan, was a colossal mess and he was still handed over the third installment of Dhoom. Even though the film went on to become a commercial blockbuster, it's pretty unanimous that quality-wise, it's the worst of the three installments. But as money speaks more than quality, being handed over a project like Thugs of Hindustan was a monumental task. You cannot screw this up because the stakes are too high. But my god, was that a slog to go through. Even a rare combination like Amir and Amitabh Bachchan together could not help this sinking ship, becoming a financial disaster and putting the director in movie jail. Having not worked for four years and being handed over a small project like The Great Indian Family that released last year and vanished from theatres without anyone noticing. And that was the video guys. Write down in the comments below whether you have some video ideas for our channel. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram. The handle's right in front of you. Follow me at jammypants4. Also please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead. Thank you for watching.